Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by Intermoney Stocks. Today is Friday, June 6, 2014. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. You're going to see that the S&P 500 E-mini futures are trading higher by about three and three-quarter points to 1942 spot 25 per contract. Uh, the pop-up in the futures comes after the U.S. Labor Department released a non-farm payroll report. Uh, looks like the report said that the economy added 217,000 jobs in the month of May. The unemployment rate is now 6.3% according to their numbers. Now, what can we make out of that? Um, is a good number like this going to raise interest rates? Is a good number like this going to make the Federal Reserve taper their quantitative easing program? I don't think so. Um, the, right now, the market, good news is good news and bad news is good news. Um, we're in a light volume environment. That's kind of the environment that we're in. And then you have the currency worlds, whether it's the dollar yen or the euro, uh, you have to watch that as well. So there's a lot going on out here. But anyway, you slice it or dice it. Futures are trading up a little bit. Um, we'll see where they finish at the end of the day. Remember, the volume trends this week have been some of the lightest uh, volume trends all year. So whenever you have a light volume market, it is very, very hard to see downside. And today, you could get a flat to slightly positive trading tape again. I mean, I, that's all I'm seeing. I, I don't really see any big negatives out here for the marketplace, um, not in this light volume environment at least. All right, let's get into some stocks out here because there are a lot of stocks in the news. Um, the first one we're going to look at today is going to be Hertz Rent-A-Car. HTZ is the ticker symbol. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the news was on this one. I don't think I really saw it, but one thing I will say... Um, the stock is trading sharply lower, and that should be that should be on everybody's alert or watch list. Uh, right now, you have, I believe, uh, okay. Here's the news: Hertz has to restate uh, its restate its results over accounting issues. So the stock is trading down pretty sharply. It closed at around thirty dollars and forty nine cents. It's now trading at twenty seven dollars and sixty one cents. I will have some gap levels for Hertz today. Uh, post it up in the chat room so they'll be up at 9 o'clock in the morning so if you want to trade Hertz with us come on over to the chat room those those uh, levels will be posted up in the chat room at 9 a.m. but it looks like the company is restating their uh, results uh, due to some accounting issues this could also affect um, ticker symbol CAR this could trade down in sympathy as well so this has been really one of the better performing equities lately but uh, Avis Budget Group, ticker symbol C-A-R, CAR, um, this could be trading down today a little bit as well. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. So keep that on the radar list. Um, if that got down to around $52, I doubt it will. Um, CAR looks like a real good bargain at that level. But either way, um, we'll see how this plays out. But keep it on your sympathy list. This is probably going to trade down in, at the open in sympathy with the, uh, with the Hertz Budget. All right, let's take a look at, uh, excuse me, with Hertz rental car. Uh, let's take a look at the next one here. We're going to take a look at uh, Verifone. Ticker symbol is P-A-Y. Uh, the stock is trading uh, at around 34.90. It closed at 33.82. Uh, I don't really see a lot of upside for this equity. Now, I know uh, they came out with some news today, but um, be very, very careful. I would not be a buyer of, of P-A-Y here, which is Verifone, at these levels. It just looks... It's been in a long, choppy, sideways base, so it's going to try to break out here, but I, I just don't see it happening, so be very, very careful there. Um, let's take a look at the next one here, which is Diamond Foods, D-A-M-D. Um, this one is trading lower. It closed at $33.32, now trading at $31. bucks. i am going to have some gap levels for this. We'll post those up in the chat room at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right now, the stock um, is actually starting to uptick a little bit, but there's not much volume here, so... Uh, we'll see if this does come down. Right off the bat, uh, you probably have a little bit of support around $28. But after that, I do have some gap support levels that look pretty solid in my opinion. So uh, come on over to the chat room. Those will be posted up uh, right around uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. Let's take a look at Panera Bread. It looks like they're doing a share buyback. I'm not exactly uh, sure of the amount. Let me just check on that one. But it uh, looks like they're doing a share buyback. Oh, yeah, it looks like they're going to buy uh, $600 million worth of stock and it replacing an existing program. Um, so, again, Panera up a little bit on the news. I don't think it's that important. I don't even think the news is that great. 
If the stock by some chance today got to around 167.50, short it. That would be that would be all it could go to. I don't even think that happens, but keep it on the radar if it does happen. 167.50, um, Panera would be a fade play this morning. Uh, let's take a look at MW uh, ticker symbol. MW is Men's Warehouse. I think they reported some earnings. Um, let me get that up there. There we go. Right now, the stock's trading at 52 bucks. These guys are also closing a deal with uh, jo Joseph A. Bank, so that deal is supposed to close any time now. So I, I don't see a lot of upside for Men's Warehouse here. Maybe it's holding up pretty well, but um, I would not be a buyer up here. If I had a, a little bit more of a level, I would actually look to sell this equity short um, right now, but um, I don't have a great spot. Let me see here. Men's Warehouse gets to $54.17. You could probably short it. So keep that on the radar. MW gets to $54.17. It would be a fade candidate. You could probably play that to the short side. Um, I guess off the bat, you could probably look for about $0.30, cents, $0.40 cents of downside from there and use about the same type of stop loss. Let's take a look at Vail Resorts. Ticker symbol is MTN Mountain, just like Vail. If anybody's ever been there, it's pretty nice. Um, Right now, the stock is trading at $73.53. It closed at $72, so um, nice little pop there. But I don't see a lot of upside here for Vail Resort, so be very, very careful here. Uh, I don't have a, a, a good level because we're approaching new all-time highs for a fade play, but I just don't see a lot of upside, so be very, very careful. Uh, that's what we're seeing. At, that's all I'm seeing at the moment. All right, let's uh, shoot over to the dollar-yen chart. I think this is worth taking a view at. Um, what you're going to see here is dollar-yen <clears throat> started up, started down, and now it's moving lower. This what I've noticed here, and this is just my observation, is that anytime the dollar-yen um, seems to put in a little intraday low around 8 or 9 o'clock, and then it starts to rally up, and that generally will save the stock market. But ultimately, when dollar yen goes down, the stock market will usually go down with it. In fact, you could see that the ES futures are fading a little bit um, from their morning highs as dollar yen has moved lower. But when dollar yen catches a little bit of a bid, it starts to move back up. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here, dollar yen was selling off, ES sold off. Now dollar yen is upticking, and the ES is starting to uptick as well. So. Um, keep that on the radar, but generally dollar yen, um, from what I've been seeing over the past couple weeks, every time the stock market is in trouble, dollar yen starts to rally up around 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. You can go back and look at the chart yourself, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, let's shift gears here a little bit. <clears throat> let's get over to the gold market. Gold is up $3.70 to $1,257 an ounce. Gold had a big day yesterday. It's trading up a little bit today. I don't love gold. I don't hate gold. I'm neutral on it at the moment, and that's how we need to be in this kind of pattern. It was oversold. It was due for some kind of a technical bounce, but I think that's all that we can make out of it at the moment. Next one we're going to look at here is Light Sweet Crude. <clears throat> right now, Light Sweet Crude futures are up 42 cents to 102.90 a barrel, $102.90 a barrel. Let's go to the all important USO which is a good proxy for trading Light Sweet Crude. And you're going to see that's trading at 37.70. Oil is holding up very well. It is not showing really much weakness. It's had a pullback over the past week, but it's been very gradual and mild. So oil actually can trade higher. Um, geopolitical events being uh, the way they are today, whether it's Russia and Ukraine, whether it's uh, problems in the Middle East, um, oil is still holding up very, very well at this stage of the game. So again, there's nothing we could really do with it. If the USO did get down to around $36.45, that would be a level uh, of support. If oil, if the USO traded up around $39.35, that would be a level of resistance. But we're dead smack in the middle, so there's not a lot we could do with that at this stage of the game. Futures are trading higher by $3.75. Today is a Friday. Um, unless something dramatic happens, Fridays um, are usually generally light, light volume trading days, and that generally will favor the upside in the marketplace. So uh, keep that on your radar. Also, watch dollar yen. As long as dollar yen starts to bounce up around eight nine o'clock into the rest of the day, the market will should be fine. If dollar yen sells off, all bets are off. This market could roll over. All right. With that said, everybody, I'm going to leave it here. Keep it short and sweet today. I want to wish you all a great trading week.
and we'll see you on the charts.